He touched me, oh, he touched me, and now there's joy that floods my soul. Hello, dear friends. Pastor Dan here, and as always, I'm so grateful that you're joining with us today as we uh, gather again, once again, around uh, God's Word, the only Word of Truth. Now today, as you're joining us, for, if you're joining us for the first time, I want to welcome you to our study. Now, dear friends, if you're blessed, if you're uplifted, or if you're even challenged by our study, then I invite you to click on that little like button and subscribe. And then while you're there, why not just invite a friend or, or even a family member to join with us as we encounter together the unveiling truth of God's Word. Now, I want you to, especially you who are subscribers, I, I want you to, that you never think or take it, think that I take for granted or like lightly that you're joining with us and subscribing because we seem to be a, a growing family of believers and uh, I, I'm, I'm humbled and grateful to the Lord uh, for each of you. But dear friend, whether you're a subscriber or whether you're joining us from time to time, uh, my prayer is that God will richly bless you with His abiding and His amazing grace. Now today, I felt the Lord would have us to look into the 18th Psalm, and uh, we'll be looking at the first two verses only, and uh, that is because I feel, especially verse 2, is just jam-packed with some fantastic, powerful truths that we should be sharing together today. Uh, now, if, if I were to give our study today a title, it would probably be along the lines of uh, the power of positive confession. So with that, dear friends, let us open God's Word to the 18th Psalm. Now, as I always do, I, and I feel it's important to give you some background information. Now, for much of, for many of you, that will be, you know, be old news. For some others, it may be new to you. But in any case, it's important to your personal reading of the Psalms. So we see in the Hebrew text that the entire collection of the Psalms is entitled Praises. Then in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, known as the Septuagint, which is identified by the Roman numeral 70, is called Psalms. And then in the New Testament, namely Luke chapter 40, I mean chapter 20, verse 42, and Acts 1, 20, it's referred to as the book of Psalms. And you will find in Luke that even Jesus referred to it with that title. Now, the Psalms constitutes Israel's hymn book, ancient hymn book, and it kind of defined the proper spirit and, and content of worship. And as you know, altogether, there's a total of 166 psalms, so you're not going to sit down and read it in one day, as are some of the other books. And also, not all of them are credited to David. However, our text today, the 18th psalm, is definitely has David as its author. So with that, let us open God's Word to the 18th psalm, uh, beginning with verse 1, where David writes, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Now, have you ever awoken in the morning and you just wanted to bury your head in your pillow? You just, you just don't want to face another day, especially these days. But somehow, even grudgingly, you pull that old or even young bod out of bed, you go ahead with whatever the day holds. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been mornings that I've looked in that mirror and what stared back at me just seemed to be crying out, please just take me back to bed. You know, there are times when you, you just feel weak. It's more, it's more than just being tired. It's more like being beat down by the cir circumstances that seem to just keep bombarding you every day with ever-changing and, and added restrictions that somehow never seem to affect the ones giving them. Sometimes, from all of it, it's just a matter of being extremely drained. Sometimes, it's just too much. Have you ever been there? Maybe you are there. If you have, and if you are, did you know that Jesus once said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? Now the problem is, it's just like eating. That abundance you put there, and it speaks of more than enough. It can be positive, it can also be negative. The point is that whatever you dwell on the most will be your abundant confession. Now sadly, there, there are people that are just simply not happy unless they're miserable 
and making sure you know about it. But for the rest, you need to know positive confession can go a long way in giving you a positive outlook in life. You know, even King Solomon went so far in Proverbs 23 to say, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's kind of like saying it's possible for you to become the absolute image of your thought life. Now, some of you might say, amen. Others might say, ouch. And that's why Paul urges you in Philippians 4 and 8 to just fill your mind with whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, and whatever things are of a good report. If there is any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. And sooner or later, if you read that verse enough times, you will see as the Holy Spirit reveals it to you that the entire content of that verse speaks of Jesus. So is it any wonder that we're told in Isaiah 26 and 3, you will keep him in perfect peace, that meaning God, whose mind is focused on you because he trusts in you. And dear friend, the greatest source to guard your thought life with is the love of God. For according to 1 Corinthians 13, 5, love thinketh no evil. In other words, it doesn't dwell on the, the offense. It doesn't take into account of the wrong done or being done against it. So the question arises, do, do you find yourself dwelling on the wrong or, or even the perceived wrong that others have done to you? Could be one person in particular. Maybe a friend. Maybe even sometimes elected officials. What about maybe sometimes a family member? Sadly, all your thoughts about these things or, he, or people affect, it affects no one but you. And you can become so distraught over the actions of others that your, your emotions are just, just strained to the limit and you just don't want to face another day. Dear friends, hear the words of the Lord in Luke six twenty seven. He says, love your enemies. He says, do good to them that hate you and bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now the question may arise, how do I do that? Friend, you don't. God does. When Jesus said to love your enemies, the word used for love is agapeo, and it comes from agape. This then is a love that expresses itself from a perfect being, being God, toward an entirely unworthy object or being, being us, providing a reverent love in them towards the giver, being God. And this is the love you, you received from him when he forgave you your sins and accepted you in the beloved in Christ. Your natural capacity to love in this manner is not sufficient to overcome the hurt that others even unwittingly direct your way. But God's love in and through you will release and free you from that burden. You don't have to go, listen, you don't have to go to the movies and share popcorn with them. You just have to let God love them through you. Philippians 4.13 tells you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, love your enemies. That should sound familiar. Bless those who curse you. That should sound familiar. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And then Matthew adds that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Now it may interest you to know that here the word for love is again, alcapeo. Jesus would never have said this if it were not possible for it to be released in your life. It is his love to give. It is yours to share and express. And so we see once again, as we saw in Philippians 4, 13, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He is your source. He is the one who abides in you. He is love. And so it should be no surprise as we saw in verse 1 that in love you'll find that God is your strength. And by the way, you need to know that as used here in verse 1, the word strength simply means help. So you will always find in responding to the love of God that his help or strength makes all that he expects of you possible. You can even get out of bed, face the day, 
with his help, his strength. And so the first blessing to confess is the Lord is my strength. And then secondly, as verse 2 goes on to say, the Lord is my rock. Did you know that as used here in the Hebrew, the word for rock speaks of a refuge? Biblically speaking, a refuge is a place of shelter and a place of trust. Even, listen, even one no less than Webster considered and defined a refuge as a shelter or protection from danger or distress. So go ahead, friend. Get out of bed. And if need be, take shelter in the Lord who is your rock. And when you do, remember Psalms 91 verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Now, we see that, that your second uh, blessing to confess then is that the Lord is my rock, my refuge. And so your third blessing is also seen right there in verse 2. It goes on to say, and my fortress. The Lord is my fortress. And now in confessing that truth, truth, you need to know that in the Hebrew, the word fortress speaks of a mountain castle. It's a, it's a stronghold. It's a, it's a place of defense that you enter into. So go ahead, get out of bed. And whenever Satan comes against you like a roaring lion, abide there in your fortress, your stronghold, your place of defense. Jesus said, I will abide in you and you in me. And when you do, remember Psalm 7 and 10 tells you, my defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. So your third blessing to confess is the Lord is my fortress, my stronghold, and place of defense. And then, as if David had not already expressed enough to wake up to, he, he goes on in verse 2 to say, and my deliverer, the Lord is my deliverer. Now did you know, did you know that the Hebrew, the word deliverer means to cause, to escape? as from danger. So when your faith is being tried, remember 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it tells you God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted or tried or, or assayed beyond what you are able. But with the temptation or trial, will provide a way of escape so that you will be able to endure it or stand. Now, we all face temptations. We all face trials. Age is no factor and no defense. They just take on different dimensions. So, once again, friend, go ahead, get out of bed, and no matter the trials that come your way, God will literally cause you to escape or literally be able to stand up under the pressure. For the Lord is your deliverer. And so your fourth blessing to confess is the Lord is my deliverer. And in that deliverance, remember Psalms 37, 39, and 40, tells you the salvation of the Lord, the salvation of the righteousness of the Lord. He is their strength in times of trouble. The Lord shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust Him. Now as we continue in verse 2, you could say, it's kind of like a grab bag. For David goes on to say that He is my God. The Lord is my God. Did you know that as used here, the Hebrew word for God is El? It means mighty or almighty. It's like saying, Elohim, Jehovah is my mighty or almighty one. So go ahead, dear friend, and get out of that bed. And as you do, remember all his blessings and begin your day by greeting the one who is your God. He is your strength. He is your helper. He's your rock. He is your fortress. He's your deliverer. And so your fifth and most significant blessing is to confess the Lord is my God. From that point, everything else falls into place. David goes on in, in verse 2, confessing God is my strength. The Lord is my strength in whom I will trust. Now someone might say, well, wait a minute. We've already mentioned that blessing. We've already mentioned strength back there. In ver it was the first one in verse 1. And of course, from the perspective of plain English, you'd be right. But beloved, the Old Testament did not come to us in original English. In the original Hebrew, as used here, as used here, the word for strength differs from that of verse 1. Here the word for strength is rock, and it speaks of the solid steadfastness of God. So because He is your rock, you can depend on Him to be your rock or refuge. You can depend on Him to be your fortress, your deliverer again. He is your God, and brother and sister, great is His faithfulness. So go ahead, get out of that bed, Face your day and stand with your rock. And when you do, remember Psalms 88, verse 26. 
You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And remember, this rock is the very same Hebrew word used for strength. So your sixth blessing is to confess, the Lord is my strength, a rock. And then we come to your seventh blessing, seen in verse 2. Two words, my buckler. The Lord is my buckler. And I kind of like this one. You might find it of interest to know the Hebrew word for buckler is the very same word used for shield. This is a shield as in a protector. It's like saying my shield is with my God. And the wonder of it all, listen, the wonder of it all is that this shield is not in your hand. It differs from what you see in Ephesians. You don't pick up this shield. It's not in your hand. It's in God's. It's as if God holds and protects you as with a shield. But listen, He is the shield. So go ahead. Get out of that bed. And when you do, remember Proverbs 30, verse 5, that tells you every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Do you put your trust in Him today? Regardless of what or how many fiery darts Satan throws your way, your shield or a buckler, God Almighty, is sufficient to put out the flames. And so your seventh blessing to confess is the Lord is my buckler or shield. Now as we continue in verse 2, there remains two more blessings of God that are awaiting your confession. David continues his confession emphatically stating, He is the horn of my salvation. The Lord is the horn of your salvation. As used here, the word horn refers to authority, refers to power and even defense. For an enraged bull, the horn was a, was a dreadful and powerful weapon of defense, even offense. So when tough times hit you between the eyes and, you've, and you find yourself either in a defensive or offensive posture, remember and confess, the Lord is the horn of my salvation. He is your strong Savior. So, beloved, go ahead. Get out of bed. Face the day and take on the enemy of your soul. And as you do, remember Luke 1, that says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation, Jesus Christ, for us in the house of his servant David. So your eighth blessing to confess, the Lord is the horn of my salvation. The last, but certainly not least, is the ninth blessing. Also in verse 2, my high tower or stronghold. The Lord is my high tower. Now, some might look at that word high tower and think it speaks of a tall edifice. But of course, it goes much higher than that. It can be as seen in verse 144, verse 2, that the same Hebrew word can be used for both words, the description high and the place tower, the same Hebrew word. The Lord is my high tower. It speaks of a lofty place, speaks of a, of a fortress or a stronghold. A place giving shelter and security. Charles Spurgeon described it as a place beyond the reach of your enemies and from the heights of which you can look down upon the fury, on their fury, without any fear. But listen, for this, this tower to be a place of security, you must avail yourself of its strength. You must enter in and from within its walls take your stand. Only then can he be your high tower. So, for one last time, go ahead. Get out of bed. Face the day, resting secure in your high tower. And come what may, you can say of your enemy, is that all you got? And when you do, remember again the powerful declaration of the 91st Psalm. He that dwells, and that could be you, it should be you. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my God. In Him I will trust or, or literally lean on and come to confidently rely. Do you trust Him today? So your ninth and your final blessing to confess is the Lord is my high tower. Or if you prefer, 
my stronghold. So there you have it. Nine blessings from God for you to confess or agree with. There are, of course, many more blessings from God, for His blessings are as endless as He is. Dear friend, just think what effect it would have on you if every morning, starting today, I should say starting tomorrow, as you rise to face your day, to that person facing you in the mirror, you made Psalms 18, verses 1 and 2, your positive confession of the, for the day. Right there on the mirror you had posted, verse 2, your positive confessions. I tell you, if you do that soon and very soon, you will fully realize the significance of the words of Jesus that we see in Matthew 12, 34, where he said, out of the abundance of the heart, that's your heart, beloved. The mouth speaks. That's your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the question is, what is your confession today? It could be, and it should be, that God alone is your strength or help. He alone is your rock or your refuge. He alone is your deliverer. He is your God and strength, the rock and, and whom you trust. He is your shield. He is the horn of your salvation. He is your high tower. So no wonder, dear friend, in verse 3, that David said, as you will, when you make the same positive confession, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. Let us pray. Father, today we have presented nine blessings that are as lasting as you are. They are your word, and you stand behind your word. They are your promises. You stand behind your promises. You, you would not make them if it were not so. And so, Father, I just speak this morning or this evening, wherever you might be, dear friend. If you are outside of the saving grace of God, if you've never made these kinds of confessions, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord, the Savior of your life, there's your first step. There's your first confession. And if that's the desire of your heart, then I just ask you to simply join with me in this prayer. Father God, I acknowledge, as you have said in your word, I am a sinner. But I'm a sinner that can be saved by grace. And so I come to you surrendering my life, my whole being, and inviting you, dear Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life as I surrender it all to you now. And I know by your promises that I am saved, I am made whole, I am now a child of God. And to you be all the glory. And if you're out there, dear friend, today, maybe things have gotten you down, you kind of grew a little weak in your faith, remember these confessions. And friend, Jesus is right there where you left him. Just come back, confess, these are your blessings. And to that, we all said, Amen. Now, dear friend, I, I, I hope today's study has been a blessing to you. And if that prayer was your prayer today, then please know, please believe in your heart that in as much as you've surrendered your life to Jesus, as much as you've invited Him to take control as Lord and Savior of life, Jesus has a promise for you. And you can see it in Psalm Revelation 3.21. Listen, he says, I stand at the door. That's the door of your heart. And knock. If any man or person hears my voice or my word and it opens the door, and that speaks of your decision today, I, he says, I will come into him and dine or, or fellowship with him and he with me. It's a promise, dear friend. Because of your prayer, he abides in you. It speaks of a rich and ever-increasing fellowship that it only grows sweeter and sweeter as the days go by and even as the years and as you immerse yourself in the Word of God.
And so with that, I hope you'll join with us next week as we once again gather together around the Word of God. Because as I always say, I believe Father God has something special for us. So until then, my dear friend, God bless and bye-bye.